Hey everybody, good morning, happy Saturday. It's 9.45 a.m. And for dinner tonight, we're gonna do a Boston butt, barbecue Boston butt sandwiches, pulled pork sandwiches, whatever you wanna call them. You can slice it, you can shred it, you could tear into it, you can do whatever you want when you're done, as you'll see. It's gonna be delicious, tender, juicy, and amazing. But we're gonna do it in a crock pot uh, because I don't plan on being here all day. I'm going out. Uh, we're gonna be out, me and my boys are gonna be out playing. So, you know, an, a, a Boston butt, basically this size here, which is, don't know, five pounds, five and a half pounds, 5.5 pounds. This is gonna take about eight hours to cook. If you start going with like six and a half, seven, eight pounders, they can take as long as 10 hours to cook. So you gotta kinda pay attention to that. But there's something really important about crock pot cooking a Boston butt that I need to show you guys at the end. So make sure you stick around to the end so you can see the little trick to help make it a little bit easier on your belly. Let me go ahead and get started. First thing I like to do, I'm gonna put on some gloves, I'm gonna tear into this, I'm gonna wash the meat, and then we'll pick the video back up. But I just like to wash it off in nice cool water in the sink. Okay, so I'm back. The first thing that I like to do, get your crock pot. I like to use the plastic liners, okay? Sorry I'm not totally in the shot, but one camera, this is the important shot. Um, I like to use plastic liners in my crock pot because it just makes it a little bit easier for cleanup. And also, at the end, like I said, I got a little trick to show you guys. Uh, and it makes it easier to have the liner. Now, some people worry about the plastics and stuff like that with the heat. Um, you know, that's up to you. I'm not here to tell you what to do. I'm just here to show you how I do it. You do what you want. You can put a little olive oil if you want um, here on the inside of your pan and then do your cooking and that'll also help make easy cleanup. But I like to use the liner, whatever. Um, before I put the meat in, the first thing I wanna do is I'm gonna use something like a tangy barbecue sauce like this. This is a classic Carolina sauce made here in Atlanta, Georgia, I think, or Marietta, Georgia. But this is a local company here, Williamson Brothers Barbecue. This has like a mustard uh, base to it. It's got more of a tangy taste to it. This isn't a sauce that I'm gonna use for my final meal but this is the sauce that I want to marinate the meat in and cook it in and with the, the scent and everything flavoring the meat, you know, cause scent, uh, scent has a lot to do with flavor. So the, the smell here, the mustard, the vinegar smell really helps give it that pulled pork taste like you're at a fair or something like that. So I'll take this bottle and I'll put in a good, about three quarters, half inch to three quarters of an inch in there. Now what you're gonna do is you're just gonna get your meat, you're gonna season your meat with, with a rub that you like. This is a basic rub, Fox Brothers Barbecue. Okay, this is your basic rub. It's got salt, paprika, garlic, onion, pepper, and then other spices. Um, some people on pulled pork, they wanna, they wanna use like brown sugar um, and garlic, onion, salt, pepper. You can make your own rub if you want but I really don't need to because this right here that we just put in is gonna season, continuously season the meat. And as the meat cooks down and renders down, this is gonna become a pool that the meat is literally cooking in and it's a constant basing of the meat. It's really, really good. So we're just gonna go ahead and throw this rub all over the meat. Now this is the bone in, okay? So it does have the bone. This is your bone in Boston butt. And go ahead and coat this up. It's gonna be just like as if you're about to do a barbecue outside on the smoker or something, you're gonna smoke this. Usually people are gonna to wanna to put their rub on a few hours ahead of time. So the spices start to mix with the flavors of the meat and you'll see like the salts and the sugars and stuff like that start to kinda, of, not caramelize, but you see them kinda of like pull the juices from the meat and it starts to like blend as one. Well, that's gonna happen here in the crock pot as we start slow. I like to cook it fat cap up so it continues to render the meat. As the fat renders, it continues to baste the meat. Now we got some good seasoning mixed in here some good seasoning on the on the uh, Boston bud we just go ahead and drop this in and of course we're kind of perfectionists here when we do our barbecue make sure it's all covered up real nice 
Set your timer for eight hours, okay? It's gonna cook eight to 10 hours. Set it for eight hours. And then that's gonna be about it for the crock pot. So we'll be back in about eight hours and I'll show you guys the next step. All right, so so we're back. It's been eight hours um, like to the minute that we started, 9.45, it's 5.45. We actually started this closer to 10 o'clock by the time we seasoned it and everything. But we got you know about eight hours of cook time here, but I need to get going here. Um, most of these newer crock pots, when you hit the eight hour mark, they're gonna go ahead and switch over to warm. So if you work and you know, you're out of the house for nine hours or maybe 10 hours because of you know, travel time and stuff like that, then these crock pots will switch over to warm and it'll keep it warm for you. Now I moved it over here because this is why I like to use a bag. This was something I wanted to show you guys, all right? If you look in here, there's a whole lot of oil from the pork, from the fat. It's a whole lot of like grease that this is sitting in. Now look at this bone. This bone is ready to just fall right out. Look at the meat, you can't even, you need to get this meat out of all of this grease, all this cooked down pork. If you don't, oh, your tummy is gonna hurt. When you barbecue this outside, like in a smoker, you slow cook it or whatever, that all drips down. Um, but when you do it in a crock pot or a baking pan or something like that in the oven, you got all this grease and oil to contend with and, and all that. You don't want to take this and shred it right in here. And if you try to pick it up, it's going to start falling apart on you. So what I like to do is I take the bag. This is why I like to use the bag. I take the bag and I just very carefully pick everything up as one unit. It holds the meat together for you. I'll push this back out of my way. And I'm gonna grab this pan already lined with aluminum foil. Now I take my scissors, line this up right over your drain and just cut the bottom but be very very careful it's going to come out with some force so cut down low and make sure it's dripping where you need it to go and in my case it's right down my case it's right down to pig right down to disposal this is hot steam coming up so have a twist right here to hold the steam in so you're not burning your hand it's all things you just pick up over time open this up all right, and now I just drain all that grease out, all that fat out, down the pig, down the disposal. If you don't have a disposal, if you're worried about like putting oil, this isn't cooking oil or anything like that, but if you're worried about oil going down your drain or whatever, then go ahead and use um, a pickle jar or something that you keep, you know, coffee, uh, coffee can, something that you keep once you use it and then you can dispose of it through your garbage. Once you have this done, and you have all that grease out, drained out, then there's one more final step I like to do. Now look at this. The bone and the meat is completely separated, just like on a smoker. It did a fantastic job. Now one more thing that I like to do, very carefully, and really at this point, it's just a matter of pride that I don't want the meat to all fall apart until the actual cooking is done. But what I like to do now is go ahead and remove the bag from the meat Without making too much of a mess. Ooh, that's hot. And you're almost ready. 
There's one more thing to do. Have your oven set at 225 degrees. Throw this in here uncovered and the dry heat is going to finish cooking off the grease on the outside. All right, set your timer, 225 degrees, 20 minutes. That dry heat is gonna help dry all the grease on the outside of that meat. It's gonna help your belly, makes a huge difference. While this is going on, you can start your sides. All right, guys, check this out, right? Watch. We're done, we're done, turn everything off. Look how the meat retracted. Look at the bone. Just like off a smoker. And see how it doesn't have, it's all charred now. It doesn't have all that grease looking on it. Nice, perfect. Now, set this up here and you guys know what to do, right? Wrap it up with some tin foil. And leave it all right guys so now for the main part uh, it's been close enough I don't know it's been like 15 minutes or so we can go ahead and uncover it here's the bone the coveted bone falls right out of the meat I mean complete and total separation that's perfect absolutely perfect I mean nothing sticks to it at all it's completely clean so you know that's looking pretty darn good right there. Wow, oh my goodness, that smells so good. Let me get my gloves. There's the meat right there. Look at that. Completely clean of all meat, just instant clean. Perfect. All right, at this point, uh, you can shred it right here. You can shred it into Tupperware. Uh, you can use forks and peel it apart. You can pull it, you know, pull pork, you pull it apart. You could take this, put it on a cutting board, cut it into slices if you want. Choice is completely up to you what you how you want to do it. What I'm going to do, I'm going to get some Tupperware, I'm going to grab it, and I'm just going to shred it into Tupperware, and then I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of my favorite barbecue sauce in there to keep it flavored with the barbecue. Serve it right on the buns. Check it out. <laughs> I mean, dang. It just falls right apart. You still got that nice rub on the outside here. So there's a nice big chunk right there. Push this aside. Now from here, just shred it. It is very hot still, okay? So be careful. If you need to, use forks. See the forks like this? Shred it, pull it apart. Close off. Little barbecue sauce. Food left? Keep going. You want another one? Yes, sir. You like it? Yes, sir. It's awesome. Is that the best barbecue pulled pork you ever had? You know, I cooked it in a crock pot. I didn't cook it outside. For real? Yeah, man. That's all awesome. cooked inside. Yes, sir. Well, I'll tell you what, man. Since you were so polite and you asked so nice, take yours. I'm going to go ahead and give you Jay's. Go ahead, buddy. <laughs> you can take that. There you go. <laughs> get macaroni instead. Listen here, you wicked sickler. Matt? Stop! I'm serious. That's what you Yes, you were. You like that the thanks, bread is Jay. toasted? Mm -hmm. Keo, just say thanks, Jay. That was good. Thanks, Jay. It was good. Jay put extra sauce on it. it makes it even better. Jay, grab a fork. There you go, buddy. Finally. Thank you. <laughs> That would be the last one. Now yes. you know, you know Jay doesn't really like Nathaniel. He likes Nathaniel Daddy's cooking. The cooking? Oh, I see Jay. 
All right, man, guys, we got we got Fortnite on the TV. We're going to spectate, um, watch a game. We got our macaroni and cheese still going. We still got a big old hunk of meat. We dished out one, two, three, four kids. One got leftovers. I still got to make my plate up. All right, guys, so here you go. Here's your barbecue pulled pork sandwich cooked in a crock pot, macaroni and cheese. Hey, kids, you like it? Get out of my house, Jay. <laughs> it's okay. All right, so anyways, see you guys later. Thank you so much for checking it out. Too easy, guys.